Okay, so now we're getting into the graphs of log functions. What we have here, log base 3 of x minus 4. Now, in a previous video, I talked about where the base graph comes from. So since we're using transformations, we need to know first what our base graph is, and that's this one down here, log e y equals log base b of x. That originally came from the inverse. It was the inverse of the exponential function. So we drew the inverse. It's, it's reflective about the line y equals x, and we got this one as a result. So this is what our normal graph looks like. We have a vertical asymptote at 0. We have the x-intercept is always crossing one to the right of your vertical, and that's for a normal one with no flips or anything like that. Now this one doesn't have any negatives, which means that there's no flips, but it will look just like this one. It'll have the same direction. All we're doing here is we got a transformation on the inside. So anytime you have something on the inside, that affects your left and right movement. The minus four here will tell us that we're going to move the base graph, the log equals B, uh, the y equals log base b of x, that graph, we're going to move four places opposite direction of this sign here. So instead of a minus, instead of moving it uh, to the left towards the negatives, we're actually moving it to the right. So that involves starting with the base graph. And what we're going to do is normally the, the uh, asymptote is going to be at zero. We're going to move that four places over to the right. And I'm going to draw a dotted line that represents our new vertical asymptote. The graph is being shifted this way, four places to the right. Now this original dot here that was at 1 comma 0, that also moves four places over to the right as well. So if we're at 1 and we're going to add 4 to it, that means that we're going to be at 5. So we're going to be right here. Another way of looking at that is the original graph, it crosses 1 to the right of your vertical asymptote. This one's also going to cross 1 to the right of your vertical asymptote. The general shape is going to look like this. Now if we wanted to be really accurate with it, then we, we would probably want to plot some points and we would get exactly how steep or how low this is. In this case we're not looking for that, we're just looking for an overall sketch of the graph. So therefore the graph will come up and it's going to look something like this. It'll come up, it'll follow the vertical asymptote there, it'll hit the x-axis right here and it'll continue. So now that we have the graph complete, we can answer the two questions. The x-intercept is where it crosses the x-axis. That's going to cross at 5. Then the domain is talking about the x values that are used in this graph. Now you could do this one of two different ways. Uh, we, we just did a, pre, a video uh, talking about that you would take this inside and set it to be greater than 0. So you could do it algebraically. You would get x is greater than 4. Or reading the graph, you see that the only values that are used here will be starting from 4 and going to infinity. So you, we can just put 4 to infinity as our domain again. That would describe all the x values that are used. Notice here I'm using a parenthesis on the, the interval instead of a bracket because we don't want to include that. It, the graph is never actually going to reach the vertical asymptote. It's going to come very, very close to it, but it'll never reach it. So therefore, whenever you have vertical asymptotes, you're never going to include that number. So we always want to make that a parenthesis.